We're in the midst of a global movement against anti-black violence, including police killing of black people with impunity on the streets of the United States. In cities and suburbs, we're losing too many members of our community who are entitled to life, liberty, and their own vision of the pursuit of happiness. Regardless of what you think about the political processes we use to govern ourselves, we have a right to decide how we're going to live. And to do that, we have to be able to live. I'm supporting this scholar strike to raise awareness of police violence against black people and to call for an end to it. There are a lot of ways you can take part in ongoing movements like this. One of your first stops can be the Movement for Black Lives at m4bl.org, which includes a platform for efforts we can engage in together to divert resources from policing and punishment in our communities and toward the support and solutions we know we need. Police can't be the first people or the only people we can call when members of our community or we are in distress, when we need housing, when we need mental health support, when we need safe communities, when we need protection from the people closest to us and the people who live at such a distance from us that they don't understand us. We have to build institutions that help us understand each other. One of those institutions is the university. And while I'm withholding my academic labor for these days of the scholar strike, I'm participating along with students, my colleagues, staff members, and community members where our universities are located to try to get cops off our campuses. I was always taught, and it's my practice as an English professor, that when you're in a crisis, if you can, use your words. We don't solve our problems best through violence against each other, and in fact, violence is what happens when language doesn't suffice when it doesn't work, and when we don't even try, of course we turn to policing. If we can't control ourselves, we can't control our communities, we turn to people with guns, then we're really not living up to the values of an institution dedicated to higher education. I think that collectively, we're smart enough, and we deserve better than people with guns, people with zip ties, people questioning whether we belong in the spaces where we live, work, and learn that we have currently. Getting cops off our campuses is only one part of an agenda to take policing out of places where it doesn't belong. You can read more about this in the foundational work of scholar Angela Davis in her book, Are Prisons Obsolete? I was first drawn to this work when I was reading the work of incarcerated black gay men in the Schomburg Center for Black Culture in New York as part of my own research. One of the things I learned was that Angela Davis, having experienced incarceration herself, having been a political prisoner with a movement to free her, didn't see the challenges she faced as about herself only or about the politics that she supported only. She was asking a fundamental question about the kind of society we would like to build for each other. You can learn more about the connections between policing, the law, and labor from scholars who have done work on the role that police unions or police fraternal associations, police brotherhoods, have played in undermining the ways we try to govern ourselves democratically, putting their own interests and their own power to do violence against our own self-determination. If you want to learn more about Scholar Strike, I encourage you to follow the hashtag Scholar Strike and the account at Scholar Strike, one word, on Twitter. The best we can do now is to learn, to equip ourselves, and to do the work that we know is necessary. Even if you don't think defunding the police is the end, we know that the beginning is withdrawing our resources from what doesn't work, from what does us harm, and putting our efforts into measures that we know help our communities. We know where the help is needed, so let's do it.